Hey there! Welcome to Flying Chariots The Rise, the space where we explore a variety of perspectives and experiences. I am your host, Daniel, and with me is my co-host, the one and only Dustin Schuta. In today's episode, we dive into a unique account shared by Nigel, who claims to have had a UFO sighting and an abduction experience. During this encounter, he describes seeing both a grey alien-like creature and a reptilian-like being inside a craft. The reptilian allegedly communicated with Nigel telepathically, suggesting a connection between them. Now, it's important to approach Nigel's story with an open mind. While some may find it intriguing, others might approach it with skepticism. And that's okay, guys. Our goal is not to convince or dismiss, but to provide a platform for diverse stories and perspectives. So guys, as we listen to Nigel's account, let's keep in mind the vast range of beliefs and interpretations that exist out there. Every single one of you is invited to form their own opinions and reflections on this intriguing story. But now, without further ado guys, let's jump right into Nigel's unbelievable experience. Well, here with us is Nigel from the UK. He's got an interesting backstory and we're going to dive right into it. So, hey, Nigel, tell us a little bit about where you grew up and how you discovered who you are. Right. Okay. Well, I'm originally from a small country town called Tring in Hertfordshire, which is um, approximately 30 miles north of London. Wasn't in a sort of like very good upbringing of a family. My dad wasn't very good to us. Um, you know, he treated me and my sisters. I've got three older sisters. They I was a bit of a loner ever since I was a very young lad, uh, about five, six years old. I was bullied at school, you know, all the usual sort of... Anyway, um, I left school back in 1984, where I sort of like went into working in the automotive industry, uh, in stores, department and garages. Then I ended up doing um, delivery driving work vans and seven half ton trucks and then ended up basically um getting my bus license so i've done um you know service bus transit bus work i've done tour bus work i've been to munich i've been to austria french alps um yeah quite a bit of europe anyway um unfortunately i don't work at now because of health reasons Ended up moving to Northampton um, before I finished with the buses. Yeah, when, when I finished, um, I was still doing a bit of casual driving after I finished with the um, transit buses. Back in 2014 was when life totally changed for me. Um, I can't remember sort of what time of the year it was. I think it was coming up for sort of autumn time. Anyway, one evening... I was watching some of the um, UFO programs on, on satellite TV, like the what's it, um, Ancient Aliens with uh, Giorgio, um, I can't even pronounce his second name, the one with the wild hair. <laughs> anyway, um, I'd been watching a lot of that up until it got to about 11 p.m. at night, and I thought, right, okay, I'm going to call it quits. I'm going to make myself a hot drink, go and uh, have a smoke out in the garden. So I went into the kitchen, made my drink, went out into the garden, clear night, plenty of stars, still night, no wind, beautiful evening. So I went and sat on my garden bench outside, lit up a smoke and sent in my tea. And well, all our houses went down a hillside. So, you know, the gardens were going down gradually. I was near to the bottom of the street. Over one of the buildings at the end of the street, there was this bright white light. I thought, well, it's too low and too bright to be a star or a planet or anything like that. So I'm thinking, well, what is it? And I'm thinking, plane. And I thought, no, there's no sound. 
and it was totally stationary. There was not even any navigation lights. So I'm thinking, well, I can discount it being a plane. And I thought, well, what the heck is it? You know, trying to work out in my mind. Sip of my tea again, looked up, and I thought, hang on, did that just move? I'm just watching this thing, and sure enough, it was gradually, slowly, slowly coming towards me. No sound whatsoever. Even the, the night was totally silent, not even a dog barking or a cat or anything. You know, it was just sort of like totally still, which I thought was a bit weird as well, you know. Anyway, as I watched this thing, it started to come right over my head. It must have sat over my head for about two or three seconds. And I'm looking up at this thing. I couldn't make out any form of it. It was just like an intense ball of white light. I got up, turned around and watched this thing as it gradually went off into the distance over the gardens and disappeared behind a big tree in somebody's backyard. And that was it. I, I was just standing there afterwards like, WTF, what was that? You know, my jaw was to the ground and I'm thinking, the hairs on the back of my neck were standing up. I felt like it was like a static charge running through me. I went indoors, you know, dumbstruck, basically. I, I was like, what the heck? What did I just see? After that, I joined Facebook, found all the UFO groups and, you know, talking to people to see if anyone had experienced what I'd experienced, you know. I guess it was about three or four nights later. I'm laying on the couch watching TV. All of a sudden, I wasn't where I, I wasn't in my home anymore. I can remember every detail of the following event, like it was yesterday. Basically, I ended up in this darkish room with like subdued lighting. It was like um, almost like a bioilluminescent glow coming from the edges of the roof of this this room. I'm sitting behind this like it looked like a sort of like brushed stainless steel table. In front of me to the left slightly was this, what I can only describe as like, um, it wasn't sort of like a grey colour, it was more like a whitish grey, sort of like, you know, the, the stereotypical sort of like um, grey type alien, you know, with the big eyes, the big head. He was looking away from me to the side, no communication whatsoever, and then all of a sudden, I couldn't see any doorways in this room as well. And all of a sudden, behind the grate appeared what I can only describe as a eight to nine foot tall reptilian humanoid. Very muscular, thick legs going down to clawed feet. And then as he walked from behind the grate, I noticed he had about between two to four foot tail. He stopped right in front of me, turned round, looked into my eyes. It felt like there was a telepathic bond. All I can remember was like him turning around saying, don't be afraid, we're not going to harm you. And what really shook me was he turned around and said, you're one of us. And then literally he raised like that to sort of gesture and then turned around, walked off and vanished. Didn't go through any doorway. As I say, no doorway. He just disappeared. And then literally, bearing in mind I was laying down on the couch, next thing I'm bolt upright on the couch, like exclaiming to myself, what the fuck? That wasn't a dream. So do you remember any more details about the room that you've been in? Like, have you seen some things on the wall or stuff standing around, tables? Yeah, all, all, all I can remember was, as I say, there was like this brushed, Aluminium, brushed stainless steel looking like a table in front of me. The walls were sort of like um, an off-white colour. And this glow was sort of like a greeny, sort of with tinges of sort of orangey and purpley sort of tinge coming from it. Did you touch anything or did you uh, maybe touch these beings? No, um, I was almost like paralysed sort of thing. I couldn't really move. I was just sitting there like, it didn't feel like I was being sort of like forcibly held down or anything. It was just like I'm in a state of paralysis sort of thing. Do you remember some kind of smell? 
I didn't really smell anything. No, I I I, I was just sort of like basically more focused on the visual side of things, what was going on around. So what happened afterwards? Was it the only experience? After this occurred, before he walked off, he turned around and said, you'll be given more information as time progresses. After this happened, uh, I was doing some um, night bus driving, uh, taking university students to uh, a nightclub and back to their campus afterwards. Basically, I had two nights work. So rather than drive, I, I had to drive like, from here, Northampton to where I was working, which was like a good hour's drive. So rather than drive home to go back again the following night, I decided to take a sleeping bag and sleep in my car in our bus yard. I was asleep, and then all of a sudden I heard my name being called. And I'm like, Am I dreaming this? And then I came to, and I was like, I thought that somebody had come into our bus yard or something, you know, one of the workers or something going out on a job or something. Um, but the gates were locked. There was nobody about. Anyway, I sat back in my car and I heard it again. And I, Who's calling me? Who's calling me? And this voice in my head turned around and said, you know who we are. We have more information for you. Basically, then I was told that I am on a mission on Earth. I was placed here. I was born into a human body and that I am actually an ambassador of Earth relation with the mission of waking humanity, dispelling the myth that all reptilians are malevolent promoting peace, love, and light, and also to expose the the lies, the cover-ups, the corruption within the government and military, you know, and to try and unite more of humanity to the cause and what's going on. Back to the first experience. How did you feel during all this? How did I feel? Well, I felt calm. I didn't feel afraid. I felt a sense of peace. I sensed love. I sensed um, acceptance. It was like, as I say, I, I went through a lot of bad things in my early childhood and growing up. This, it made me feel, you know, it, it changed my life forever. It made me feel more in tune with earth with space with everything around me it i just sort of before i was getting very stressed about a lot of things and after this it you know things started to you know i could see beyond you know even things like the sublime programming on tv and media and everything i could see through everything I found that I had gifts, like I could figure out people's characters, even over a distance. I have a strong, empathic, you know, character. Everything really has heightened my senses. I just get sighting after sighting after sight. It's like I'm being guarded. Do you do you have any, let's say, physical? evidence or traces of your abduction are there did, did you go to the doctor afterwards something like that no I, i didn't go to the doctor or anything um i mean you know some people say a lot of people say they have implants and things like that but i have not actually felt anything within me that's felt like an implant are there more people maybe in the vicinity reported similar experiences? Well, when this first um, sighting happened, I did get in touch with a guy I found on the computer. I found this uh, UFO researcher. He was up in Yorkshire. Before I joined Facebook, I got in touch with him, told him what I'd seen. 
I did manage to get a couple of pictures at the time. I, I didn't have a very good uh, phone camera at the time, um, but I managed to get a couple of shots of it. And I sent them to him. He came back to me and said that there had been similar signs up that way. Have you noticed any changes in your behavior or in your psyche after the abduction? After this happened, I became more... Before, I, I wouldn't really talk to anybody. I was, as I say, I, I was a bit of a loner. I, you know, I, I was very shy. But after this, it made me, you know, totally a different uh, character. It, you know, I, I can't really put into words how it sort of like affected me apart from that it made me take a whole new look at life. It made me value friendship. It made me want to get in touch with broaden my network of friends you know as i say get the truth out there you know you know i've, I've been on quite a few podcasts lately um i want to get my um, own pod uh, youtube channel up and running properly get sort of like people on there to tell their stories as well mm -hmm. you know because i was told that by my people that uh, this is what i've got to do so you became more open-minded and outgoing and outspeaking about yeah. this whole topic. So, but Nigel, with peace and love, you know, to some people, the story sounds crazy, right? I know. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, since I joined Facebook back in 2014 and joined all the UFO groups, I've been called crazy. I've been called uh, delusional. I've been told that I need psychiatric help. I've had my sightings um, ridiculed. I've had, because of what I've told people who I am and what I am, I've even had death threats to my mother, to my family. It's crazy. But, Nigel, have you considered alternative explanations for what happened to you? Maybe after it happened... You thought about, hmm, was it some kind of strange dream or... I've considered all the avenues. I've also had experience where I've been inside of a craft as well. Everything that I've experienced has been too vivid, too real to be a dream, to be, you know, hallucinations or anything. I don't do drugs. I don't drink. Have you talked to uh, uh, Joanna Summerscales from the UK? She's a I haven't, no, no. I should direct her, direct you to her because she does people who have who, uh, abductees and contactees, and uh, she really gets on your side and everything because she's she really digs deep and helping people, uh, or you know, helping if you are struggling with this in a sense, or if you're not. And again, she just helps to get your name out there and stuff like that. And uh, I've done two interviews with her. When I started first doing this, I have a collection of uh, Colonel Wendell Stevens photographs uh, that uh, a lot of people have never seen. So they've gone viral ever since I put them online. And she found me through there and she wanted to hear my story and how I collected these photographs and doing what I'm doing here in Wisconsin. And uh, yeah, she's super nice and uh, she would love to hear your story. I'd, yeah, I love that. Yeah, sure. Guys up. I mean, um, you know, I mean, the uh, some of the some of the you know sightings that I've had, it's definitely not been anything that's been um, man-made. I have seen lights appear in the sky, and before I can even get my camera out to video, the lights just gone pink out like that within the space of a split second. I've seen um, lights that have um, going round each other, like dancing round each other. I've seen um, when I've been out. Um, I've had when I've been out driving my car. I've had a, a craft flying alongside the side of my car window, behind a set of trees, and then it's suddenly gone right over the roof of my car. I've seen ones in daylight, even. 
Um, you know, wherever I go, whatever I'm doing, they're there. Ones where I've been parked up in my car somewhere, I've had these sort of like or, um, red and sort of like green balls of light that have been coming up from up behind trees and then going back down again. I've seen ones that look like spinning tops, like cone shapes, sort of like shapes. Experiences like that are hard to grasp for many people. We know that. They are, yeah. We all know that. How would you address those people who are in doubt? I would say trust your gut instinct. If there's something that you see or hear in the sky that doesn't seem right, don't be put off by people saying, oh, it's this, it's that. Go with what you feel. I mean, I, I've had people saying to me, oh, it's this, it's that, it's the other, it's, you know. But at the end of the day, they're not there when you see these things. You know, I say to people that say these things to, to other, you know, people that post stuff, they say, oh, why would, this is, this is one question I've been asked many, many times is, why would extraterrestrial craft have blinking lights? And I say to them, why would they not? We have aviation lights for a reason to avoid collisions between uh, aircraft. They're in space, which is basically pitch black all the time. They have to know where other craft are, you know? So yeah, why wouldn't they? Someone someone asked me, why, why would they make themselves known to us? Why would they show themselves to us like the UFOs and stuff? And I said, why not if you're, If you're untouchable, you can do whatever you want, right? Yeah. When people say, why would they show themselves to you? You know, there are people out there that are chosen. You know, they, they know that individuals are in tune with what's going on. They know, they believe, and they um, are awake. You know, it's like, I mean, when, when I was uh, as young as five, six years old, I always used to think to myself back then, you know, we're not alone in this on, in this universe, you know, even at that early age, you know, I, I knew that, you know, we're not the only ones around, you know. Where are they from? Are they multidimensional beings? Are they from uh, another, I don't know, dimension? Are they from another solar system or where are they from? I believe there are um, many different, uh, you know, I mean, yeah, you've got um, multidimensional, interdimensional. There's, there's even beings that are under the planet with all this uh, research stations in Antarctica. I, I was actually told by somebody who was ex-military that um, basically they have a... Um, Over Antarctica, there is a strict no-fly zone, not just because of the research base, but because there is actually the entrance to inner Earth in Antarctica. Well, I like that uh, animal bird who flew over exactly the North Pole. Actually, talked about seeing uh, green valleys and actually seeing yep. the mammoth and. Uh, Actually, I think he said he even got like zapped by a UFO that had some swastikas stashed yeah. on the side of it, and they was brought down to a down to a little city basically, <laughs> and it was introduced by one of the high leaders there, is just saying, "Hey, we don't appreciate you blasting off all these nuclear bombs and destroying half our making uh, disturbance in our in our area and." Atmosphere well, I, 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 um, I, I know another guy who, um, who uh, his name is Jim Andre, and um, he was on a radio podcast um, telling his account. He was actually in contact with the Zeta Reticuli, and he was saying to, on the podcast that um, – I don't know if you've heard about the Georgia 
guide stones that got demolished. Yeah. Apparently, that was done by the Zetas because they wanted to warn about the use of CERN in Switzerland. They did it because they were trying to alert that um, messing around with CERN is the people that are operating CERN haven't got a clue of what they're dealing with. They are ramping up the power time after time, and eventually, if they carry on the way they're going, they are going to end up creating a rift, basically, yeah, doing a whole lot of damage. There was an incident where a craft was seen hovering over a, a missile silo in a, in a US base, and it basically disrupted their control systems for that silo, locked them out. And that was another warning. Mm -hmm. Basically, because if you imagine, right, uh, that they set off nukes, it's not just going to have consequences for Earth. Those shockwaves aren't just going to be confined to our atmosphere. But everything that happened to you, what does the future look like for you? What are your plans? What you, what you, what you going to do with the story? The future for me, I've actually been shown. I have been shown. Everybody goes, oh, you know, it's like with what's going on, it's going to be end times. It's going to be apocalypse. It's going to be, you know, end game. No, it isn't. People are going to end up going back to the days when before all this fast food and everything else, you know, people used to grow their own fruit and vegetables. My grandmother She had a big garden. She grew all her own fruits and vegetables. She was always cooking and baking and everything. And people need to get back to growing their own, you know, being self-sufficient as possible. Go back to the system where bartering, you know, like in the old days, exchanging goods and services, you know, creating our own energy. Before we come to an end here, guide me through something that you said before. You said this being in this craft or whatever it was, it told you that you are one of them. So what are you? Basically, uh, I was told that I'm from the real reptilian race, uh, benevolent race, that we were here on Earth before humanity even existed. So when we're talking about the reptilian race, do we talking about actual physical beings or is it metaphoric for something spiritual, something like no, that? No, actual physical beings they are. The ones that are doing all the damage are from the Alpha Dracos. I think there's different ranks I heard in the reptilians. They had some of the wing beings are the most powerful and the most high ranking. And they have the ones that just don't have any wings and uh, shorter tails and um, shorter, not as muscular. They can uh, shift in any form, a human form, if they wanted to. No, I've seen some. I've seen some pretty interesting videos of people who have uh, like filmed their eyes, and a shade will come over and it'll be a slit. You know what I'm saying? He had total control of how he can manipulate manipulate this. There's yeah. even been an account where there was uh, one within the military. Actually, there was some some military um, meeting going on, and there was like one of their sort of military security. When when you looked at him, he didn't look human at all. They feed off this terror too. I mean that. Maybe not in a bad yeah, way. Yeah, that's, but... that's the thing. With the, with the negative, the uh, malevolent ones, they feed off of fear. They feed off of controlling. You know, I mean, they are in power. Yeah, well, I heard too from Linda Moton Howell that um, the reptilians were the first ones that were here, and then the Nordics were the second to come, and then the Greys were this third one that just kind of be this weird inner meaning. They they're kind of a neutral, uh, in between. But yeah, there's a there's a war going on between the the Nordics and the, the reptilians for Earth. 
Earth's dominance, basically, of like who's going to rule. Your throat. But yeah, but again, the reptilians have been here. They claim to have been here forever, and they, they're the ones that have been messing with our DNA from the very start. That's where you see it, and all the all the holy books on Earth start with a goddamn snake. And, and they're actually mess. They're actually messing with the feed right now. Yeah, I bet they are. Those yeah. bastards. <laughs> no, I was kidding, but no, uh, no, that's very interesting, man. They, that is so cool. Messing with this, uh, this actual recording right now. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Well, Nigel, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. It was very interesting, Nigel. Thank you. My yes, pleasure. You. Is there something that you that you want to people to know? Okay. Yeah. Um, well, if if anyone wants to add me on Facebook. My name, Nigel in Pete on Facebook. Um, I've got my own UFO group, which is Exposing the UFO slash UAP Reality. I've got my YouTube channel, which is car slash rep one. I have a message to everybody out there. Keep your eyes on the skies and believe everything is real. Turn around and say the military turn around and tell us Roswell was a weather balloon. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, naturally, again, thank you so much for sharing your story. 